Hi everyone! So today we're going to be in avatar form and we are going to be continuing our profession tutorials and we are going to be hitting today logging, carpentry, lumber, and composites. So this is the main role that I decided to take on on this server and in the past I've taken this role on before because it's very integral to the building process, to the tech process, and pretty much since the game started this was a really really important set of jobs. So we're gonna actually start at the the basic sort of decision making that if you're thinking of going into logging and carpentry to start out with in the game what you're going to want to do. So here we are up in the treetops. Uh, one of the big rules that you need to know as a person that is going to be cutting down trees you do not touch, you do not touch the giant redwood trees. A lot of servers will boot you off if you touch them. I've seen some other people cutting them down, but having done it once and then realizing the impact that that has, you really, 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 really do not want to do that and you want to leave them alone. The other sort of questionable ecosystem to mess around with is going to be the jungle. The jungle is a big impact on global CO2 as one might expect. So a lot of times it is a tricky place to log. However, on the other hand, it does become a very important sort of um, location in the game as you get further into different tech trees and there's different materials. So we're just gonna take a look at the the, uh, the jungle. As you can see, it has not been logged. We've, we've left it to mature into this kind of monstrosity. And uh, the palm trees though are really, really key. The heart of palm is important for a lot of different cooking recipes. So uh, being able to have some palm trees is tricky, but you don't want to cut down the entire freaking uh, forest for some palm trees. So just as a side note, just check in with your server, with your group, and see what they want to sort of protect or if there's any unwritten rules of your server because there's definitely things like that. Now, as a logger, you also can cut down Seguro cactuses. This is a really, really good wood source if you are in the desert, so uh, that's good to know. The Joshua trees, mm, they're kind of okay as, as far as different sorts of woods go, so you can cut these down as well if you're in the desert biome. And we've got oak trees, so we've got all sorts of trees. Now, I'm gonna show you where we decided to set up, or I decided, <laughs> we, uh, where I decided to set up on the planet. Now, looking at the different zones, I wanted an area that had uh, two different types of wood, potentially, and I wanted a big sort of flat area. Uh, you can work on hills and everything, but, Anytime you're doing some sort of large scale agriculture, which tree tree planting is, um, I decided to go with over here because there's a couple different things going on. This is a sort of forest biome. We have the redwood biome right here and we have an oak biome right here. So before this server really got started and going, uh, these three biomes kind of close together, the redwoods here, the oak, and, and this area. I knew that this was sort of the zone I wanted to get started in. So let's walk over there just so you can sort of see it. Obviously now we are 30 days into the server being alive, so a lot of the natural environment has shifted and changed. Um, so, you know, take that where you will. Each zone generally has two sorts of trees. So we've got the redwoods, we've got the firs in this zone, which works just fine. Um, the oak trees are very, very, very important with the acorns. So oak trees are kind of double duty when you're doing logging. Might be worth it to set up in a oak tree biome. I really love oak trees just from my childhood and growing up in Northern California. So. I don't usually like to cut them because I really like them, but they are great, great logging trees. So over here, you can see this is where I ended up setting up my house. I wanted my shop to be really, really close to the road. And you can pretty much see the original house I built. I built just a minimal shack around the, the store here. 
And then I built an area on the back out of hewn logs for the stockpile to go up top. And that was that was pretty much it. I had the, the area for the store, area for the stockpile. Um, and that was it. That's how I started. So I ended up picking this location down here because it has cedar trees and birch trees, which are both pretty fast growing. Oh my goodness, you can tell uh, I need to get to work clearing some of these trees. Let's uh, let's clear the road a little bit here. Oh, I'm too hungry. Um, let's take out our tutorial food just so we can make sure that we get the tutorial done. So I picked the birch and the cedar just because I know this is a zone that has a lot of different purposes to it. I've been in this sort of zone many, many times. And as you can see, this spot is very level. Now, as a logger, you are going to need to make a hoe to be able to replant uh, your, your trees. It is not like Minecraft, you don't just plop it down wherever. And in update 10, they changed it. So you have to be four tiles apart to be able to plant a tree. So what you see here is this was a, a tree that naturally sort of um, spawned in. And then all of these on the perfect grid system are ones that I have replanted since. So this is all sort of third generation uh, forest because we've replanted these so many different times. Um, oh, this must be, Thundernut must have planted these. Cause I purposely wasn't planting things along this route here because I wanted a little bit of access. And as you can see, the, the branches are clipping through into the thing. But anyway, um, so that's how I picked a spot. You want somewhere where you have a level area, you have a decent amount of space because again, they have to be four feet apart. Uh, and you want to replant as much as possible because you want a renewable harvestable resource. So as a logger, um, you get a couple different choices. So let's go into the logging profession itself. You get a couple different choices. You, at the first level three, you get to choose whether you want your tool to basically be a, a level up from what it is. So if you have a stone pick, it would register as an iron pick. If you have an iron pick, it would be a steel pick. If you have a steel pick, it would be modern, but the, the, the ax would be a higher level. Sorry, not pick, but ax. Uh, it would be a higher level up. Uh, that's really great. I decided to go with efficiency. So it reduces the calorie cost by using uh, which whichever tool you're using by 20%. I felt like to me, I've gone both ways. Either one is a great option. This just reduces the amount of calories that you spend. And then at level six, this is really, really, really um, lovely, I hope that uh, it, it becomes active again, but basically picking up debris by hand doesn't cost any calories. So I think those two perks seem like a good option. Now, once you get the logs, maybe that's your only job on the server. Generally, what I've found on a lot of different servers is being a logger allows you to get a lot of currency because a lot of people will put buy orders in for logs and that's a solid, solid, solid sort of early game currency that you'll be able to trade. So I still have my uh, wanted logs by orders as well. So if other people want to sell things to me, they can sell logs. And then I have basically, this is my semi end game store. I've set up different categories where I did have tier two building material here. I had tier one, tier two and tier three, but we needed so much tier two for what we were working on. I ended up taking it off the market. I, I'll probably put it back up now, uh, so that people can buy things and build their houses. As an example, Gino's place over here was a hundred percent hewn wood logs that he bought from me. And it was a pretty, like his house became the biggest house on the server because all he did was get the logs, get the hewn logs and build the house. So like he was able to use my storefront to build this epic giant house and uh, everything you see here. So it does allow for a lot of early game sort of interaction to be the carpenter. So if you are the carpenter, let's go down into my little pit. I have this little shortcut here. Uh, this is my carpentry table. I have it right underneath the store so that when people put the logs in, it will go into the stockpile. The stockpile is connected 
to the storage. Obviously, I have a lot more now, uh, but the store stockpile right here, we'll just kind of we'll put these away a little bit so that it's not as distracting. So this this right here is our store stockpile, which you can see people have been selling stuff to me and filling it up. So let's move that so that people can still sell stuff. So ideally, what if you're able to, you want to have going is have maybe an early game, an order for 20 hewn logs active. And what that means is if you're the logger, you're going to be bringing the logs in. You're going to be making the hewn logs. If you're just the carpenter and there's some other people who are logging, then you have the work order. Every time someone puts logs into your stockpile through the store interface, then it feeds the work order you have in place. So we'll, we'll probably do a dedicated sort of like how to use the store as a tool tutorial. But for my purpose as the carpenter, I've found this works really, really well because everybody needs hewn logs. Everybody needs to be able to build their building early on. And so what I ended up doing is I put in a work order. Let's say I didn't have the logs. Then as people bring the logs, it makes the hewn logs. They can come back, they can buy the hewn logs and it just keeps processing through. You will also be making all sorts of furniture, such as the benches, the chairs, the doors, the dressers, the signs, the, the ice box, which allows you to have a kitchen. So this really gives you a leg up on getting your house set up, getting your XP going. Um, it's really, really a great profession to have. As far as that goes, you will also be building a lot of the work tables for the other professionals, the loom, um, you're going to be building things like the registrar, the real estate desk, the town hall, towel racks, things like this. Um, you're going to be building here. If you're an engineer, you will also be building the windmills and water wheels. If you're not an engineer, that'll be a locked thing down at the bottom. But this is, this is a sort of early to mid game profession that you're still going to be using pretty far into tier two because the wooden molds that you need to be able to make bricks, which is a tier two material, uh, the carpenter has to make. So you will get a lot early game, but then you're going to hit a big gap before you can take on another wood related profession. So, uh, you, you now will go up to the sawmill, which you can see this takes up a lot more space. This is still underneath carpentry. This is still within the umbrella of carpentry. You'll have to have this made for you. Um, I believe this is made on the mechanic bench, I think. Um, so this is made by someone who has the mechanic ability, I believe. Maybe, or let's see, let's just take a look. It's not made on the masonry table. I don't think it's made on the engineer. So I believe it's made on the mechanic table. Let's, let's confirm. Uh, sawmill, 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 sawmill. Uh, What am I missing? Yeah, maybe it's made. Hmm. Is it made on like the anvil? I don't. Is it? Sawmill. Yeah. Okay. So it's made on the anvil. Sorry about that. I probably should have prepped that ahead of time. So it's made on the anvil. This is going to be um, smelting. So a person with the the skill to smelt will have to make your table for you to be able to do lumber, which is a tier two building material. It's what you're seeing here. It's the flooring. Um, it's these kind of wall segments. So to be able to do that, this is where a lot of times you really need to have a buddy who's a smelter because to make lumber, which is your tier two material, you absolutely have got to have nails. Many, many times I feel like a popper just begging for nails for uh, a good, decent section of the mid game because uh, the smelters are doing a lot of different things and it's really kind of hard to get a hold of nails. So you're limited by the smelter and the milling person. So to get the flaxseed oil, this is new in update 10. 
to be able to do that. So you just need boards. You can make boards out of a lot of different things now, which is great. You can make it on the basic workbench, uh, but you could also now make particle boards, which you use that wood pulp that you get from cleaning up the debris from your trees. You can make those into boards. You can make saw boards. Um, there's all different kinds of boards that you can make, which goes into making the lumber. And again, lumber is really useful for a lot of the housing items, uh, decoration, chairs, and um, some different sort of crafting stations you're going to be doing. You are going to end up sort of working with other trades to make some of these. For example, these chairs need cloth. Uh, the bookcases need paper. There's a lot of different things that you're going to be coordinating. So at tier two, you're going to need to really have a network of people that are helping feed into what you're doing. Uh, there you make your, your uh, mechanics table on the sawmill. So you're making tables for other people. They have to make the table for you. Some of the really, 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 really high usage items is the large lumber stockpile. This is just absolutely the happiest day on your server. When you start producing these and people can put in those big, big stockpiles, they're going to be really happy with you. You're going to sell these like hotcakes. Um, and then for the farmer, being able to build silos is amazing. It, uh, it's just, it's, it's a game changer. So at this level of tech, you start to get into bridging between tier two and tier three. Uh, you're going to probably be here for a while because this does take a lot of coordination with other professions. I would highly suggest that if you're able to, paper milling is a great little side sort of profession that they added. Uh, it doesn't make a whole bunch of different things, but if you're able to take on paper milling, you can make bookcases over there on the sawmill. It's also kind of nice to have these cute little lanterns and things that you can make, but um, if you're able to, it's not a highly lucrative trade at this point, but it is lovely to have. So that's, that's pretty much as far as most people will end up getting on the wood track. Uh, but let's go one step further because I really, really, really love when I get to composites. I didn't set up sort of a, um, a showroom yet for this. I did on the last server. I did a really cool little showroom with each of the different wood types because once you hit composites, oh, let's back up. There's two different types of woods. I know you guys are gonna start giggling. There's hardwood and softwood, and you'll be able to make basically three different types of woods at the hewn level and at the lumber level. You'll be able to make hardwood, softwood, and just like basic. Um, so for example, we are looking at right here is softwood lumber, which generally is a lighter color. The hardwood lumber is darker and then just regular lumber is somewhere sort of in the middle of the, the color gradient. When you hit composites, you get to basically make a different type of wood for every single tree type there is in the game, which means when I set up a showroom for this, it's... <laughs> It's very large um, and it's it's pretty cool. So this is just three different types of woods here. We have fir, we have redwood, and we have birch. Um, and what you'll see is if we take the redwood, there's a lot of different shapes you're able to make. Um, and there's a lot of different configuration oops, uh, configurations that it can go in. So you have a lot of complexity where in the other material types you don't. Um, there's a lot of sort of complex shapes that you can have, that you can make. And of course you can have your sort of ladder, you can have um, ramps, which is kind of neat. You can actually make wooden ramps. I think that's quite cool. You might be like, why is that even important? But it's just, it's a very different material type and some of them are a little bit more shiny, some of them aren't, but either way, it's really quite interesting. Um, the colors and sort of detail that you can do with composites is great, but <laughs> you are gonna be completely at the mercy of whoever on your server is doing oil drilling 
because for composites, you absolutely have got to have plastics. You've got to have composite uh, epoxy. So plastics and epoxy come out of the refinery. We'll go outside and take a look at that real quick, but you have to have wooden boards. Okay. So again, kind of in your lumber stage, you're making boards through all the different methods. Then you have your wood tag. Now, on all of your workstations, when it comes to things like this, there's a little hammer icon over in the far right hand side. What you want to do is you want to type in the number of things you want. Let's say we want 10 composites before you click order, check on that sort of um, hammer there and you'll see the different types of woods. So if I click on palm, I think it's going to say we need palm logs. So it will not be able to finish this order until we actually put palm logs specifically into the table. But this way, you know that you're making palm logs. Uh, before the only way that I really could make sure that the wood type was the wood type I wanted was that the storage that it was linked to only had the wood type I wanted it to produce. So being able to grab this, this little hammer icon and decide which type of wood you want to use is really, really handy just to make sure you get what you really want um, and that you're not spending these really expensive materials on stuff that you don't want or like. Um, at this level, I usually get special orders. I get someone coming to me and saying, I really want 20 fur composite lumbers. Um, and that's why having the showroom is really great and, and doing that is fantastic. So you probably will not be the oil drilling person, but the oil drilling person will be able to craft petroleum. They will be able to go into the refinery and they will be able to make your epoxies and your plastics. So of course you're going to be putting in a bio order for those items so that you can make your composites. Um, as a side note, we'll have to go into a whole tutorial on the different electricities, but the, um, let's go up to the roof here. So the lumber tier two material is going to be your sort of water wheels, your windmills, these green early game energy sources will be how you power your windmill and your, or your, your sawmill. <clears throat> so your sawmill will be powered off of this. Once you get to the composites, you have to have a combustion engine and apologies for this is we're kind of in the midway to, to getting this up to be able to use it. So this looks really bad right now. It'll, it'll be better later, but we just need to be able to use the advanced masonry table. So it's a mess. Um, and this is kind of our back boiler room. So again, apologies, but this is the combustion engine. This is a big polluter. So once you get up to combustion, not only are you needing a combustion engine to power the pumps and, and all this, the, the, oil stuff, uh, but you need the combustion engine to power your composites table. So this turns on, you have to remember to turn it off again. It will not automatically turn off like the steam engine. Um, this is what powers your composite table. So you absolutely have to have this. Um, it's really great if you're able to have a water filter as well to filter the water that's going in and out of the, the, uh, combustion engine. That's a pretty expensive item to get up to. I honestly, this is my first go through doing a lot of the more um, sort of industrial professions. I'm doing it right now just to kind of understand it so that we'll be able to do some tutorials on it. It's not really my passion in the game. It's neat and it's very useful and integral to the game. Not usually my, my thing. Um, and yes, we always get a, a random pet. We had a jaguar in here. We had a deer. Now apparently we have a turkey just spawns in here. Um, anyway, so that's sort of the, the end of the, the wood material track. As you can see, getting to the composite level does end up being really heavily sort of reliant on, um, 
the mechanical people, the oil drilling people, but you're still using logs, you're still using wooden boards. So there's, there's still a certain level of use for that. Um, but just understand that once you get up to that level of um, gameplay, you are gonna be polluting. So this is, this is the large lumber door, which is also a very highly sought item from your sawmill. And uh, up top, we can go look at one of the giant stockpiles because that's your, you know, again, lumber, lumber ends up being really key. So this is, this is a large stockpile compared to the regular size stockpiles. You can see they hold a lot more. The benefit of these is exceedingly amazing. So you can stack up to 10 of like clay, dirt, things like that. Then for stone, it stacks up to 40 instead of um, 20, right? So you get a lot more bang for your buck with your storage, with your stockpiles. So these, these will end up being really important items as you go through the whole process. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's kind of the long extended version of carpentry and everything. Uh, hopefully this was helpful to you if you're thinking of going down the logging, carpentry, composites sort of way of going. Definitely make good friends with a smelter for tier 2 materials and an oil driller for tier 3. You, you will be a great team. If you are able to take on those skills yourself, you'll be a self-contained unit. However, mining and smelting sort of go together. So unless you want to be at tier one all internally, I wouldn't suggest doing that. I would, I would suggest teaming up from someone who really likes doing mining and smelting. And um, so hopefully that helps you just in thinking about how the process works, what sort of the progression is, and where on the globe you might want to set up to make sure that you have access to the most trees that you can. All right, so until next time, next time we're gonna get into mining and smelting and all sorts of other good stuff. Uh, remember to stay classy, my friends.